大家好，欢迎使用 HypeWorks 新界面。我是方宪军，从今天开始，我会录制一系列的视频教程，帮助大家上手这个新界面。总的来讲，我个人感觉是新界面比老界面要更友好，特别对初学者来讲，学习起来很容易。然后对于有经验的人来讲，新界面也确实提供了很多有吸引力的功能，是传统界面中。找不到的。我们用的视频会基于 PPT， 那这个 PPT 我们已经翻译成中文。我在每一页开头写明了 PPT 是由谁翻译的，一般来讲都是我校对的。那么这里呢，主要是为了表达对翻译的工程师的一个敬意，他付出了非常多的劳动，应该说是最多的劳动。那么接下来我们开始来正式介绍 HypeWorks， 每一个视频尽量控制在十多分钟这样的长度，让大家学起来呢不会太费劲。新界面看起来就这个样子，我们会逐步逐步的让大家适应这个新界面。但目前来讲呢，我们先做一个介绍。如果在学习的过程中，碰到技术问题，你可以打四零零电话，但是更推荐呢，大家发邮件给 support 邮箱。那发邮件的时候一定注明你是哪个单位的，或者你是哪个高校、哪个学院、哪个导师的。对于不知来源的这个邮箱呢，通常来讲我们不太会回复的。软件是在二零二一版本以上，那么可能是点一。因为这个教材有可能是点一或者是点二，但至少你是在二零二一的，这样的话，所有的点 HM 文件都不会有问题。我们大概的日程是分成了十一个部分，每一个章节呢就是一个单独的 PPT。第一个章节是基本交互，第二个章节是几何部分，那么这些的话我不不依次去读了。而比较有特别的特点的地方，一个是在后处理，一个是在自动化，一个是在设计探索。每一个部分都会有一些练习，这些练习我们根据文件名都录制了相应的操作录像，你可以找到这个录像，也可以找到录像相关的操作的模型。如果有任何问题的话，还是可以找技术支持的热线或者邮件。我们先看一下 HypeWorks 大概是怎么回事。这里有一些视频，我就直接播放一下。有些是有声音的，但是是英语的。我希望大家英语水平至少能听懂这些。介绍的简单英语，也有一些是没有是没有声音的。Down right inside the application. After launching HyperMesh, a getting started dialog appears that contains a few short videos to get you started, links to documentation and self-paced training, and a handy list of keyboard shortcuts and mouse controls. Use the search tool if you need help finding or navigating to new and old tools in HyperMesh. The search tool also searches panels and keywords for each solver interface. If you're in a familiar panel, check the lower right of the application to see if there's a link to a new tool. Clicking on the link will navigate you directly to the new tool. All new tools in HyperMesh have workflow help designed to guide you through the workflow. Expanding the workflow help shows more information about the tool and some handy shortcuts. Click on the video link to see a quick animation of how to use the tool. 这是一页广告，说 HypeWorks 很好用，我就跳过了。这个不是广告，它是说新界面跟传统界面有相同的模型格式、脚本和工作流程，就是说你原先学的传统界面的，并不会有太大的损失，只是你要新界面里面适应一下。这个数据库文件，也就是点 HM 文件，你可以两边。交替的使用都是没问题的。这是新界面
，这是经典界面。新界面中也可以打开经典界面中的面板，但是绝大部分工具已经用上面的工具来替代掉了，所以我们推荐用新的工具。但是并不排除大家使用自己熟悉的经典界面工具。我们看一下几个广告吧下一个，还是一个。This brief video shows the new and user-friendly interface of Altair Hyper Mesh, applied to a workflow including mid-surfacing, meshing, and automatic thickness assignment. Opening a model and loading a solver-specific profile can be done by just dragging and dropping the model into the user interface. Look at how easy it is to modify the newly loaded geometry. Holes in the 3D geometry can be removed with the Defeature tool. These are detected based on parameters. Users can cycle through each of the detected holes, or remove all with one mouse click. Next, a mid surface is derived from the solid geometry. To select all surfaces, use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl A to select all displayed surfaces. Here, the automatic mid surface extraction is used. Hiding the original geometry via the model browser exposes the result. Now let's delete the webbing of the part to the right of the geometry. Many new shortcuts have been introduced. For example, you can hit C to select components, E for elements, and S for surfaces. Deleting selected entities can be done by hitting the delete key. With the stitch function, the connectivity of the surfaces at that end of the model can be fixed. Another intuitive functionality is the Extend Surfaces tool, available in the Create Surfaces ribbon icon. A new surface can be created by dragging a surface edge normally or tangentially. And if you drag over any obstacles, including solid geometry boundaries around a mid surface, it can auto detect them and trim around them. Next, we create a surface mesh with the help of Altair's batch meshing technology. Before generating elements, the criteria file for elements and the parameter file for the geometry treatment can be adjusted. Here, the element size is set to 5, with a maximum element size of 10. In the parameter file, we match the element size and set parameters for washer creation around various hole sizes of the geometry. Middle mouse click executes the meshing operation. The new added elements panel replaces the quality index panel. Here, a user can modify individual elements to improve the element quality. Here, individual nodes are moved to improve element quality. An entirely new and very intuitive approach to morphing is available. In this example, the hole diameter is altered by morphing the element edges onto a smaller circle. The center of the hole can be identified to draw a new diameter, and then morph the existing mesh to the new target geometry. The new rebuild tool can be used to easily rebuild the mesh after morphing if required. As last step of this example. The thickness of the original geometry is mapped onto the elements of the mid surface. A contour plot of the results is directly created and can be reviewed later at any time through the thickness visualization modes of HyperWorks.
in this particular demo, I'll be showcasing how can we create new concepts uh, with uh, Hyperworks X. So if we go to a geometry ribbon, uh, we, we can create a rectangle that will define a working plane to create a cross section. And with that done, I'm going to start sketching the new section on the plane. I'll quickly create a guideline to create a new cross member. In geometry module, there is an option called as drag and spin. Spin will create like a cylindrical object uh, that you can extrude, uh, but I'm going to be using a drag option. So I'm, I'm going to select the newly created cross section and I'm going to pick the guideline and that's it. Uh, this way you can create a cross member gussets and that you can further morph it um, to better connect to your mesh. But as you can see, this is the geometry. If I have to do any CAE analysis, I have to convert it to a mesh. So I'm going to go to the mesh module again, and there is a new uh, generate 2D mesh option available. I'm going to select the created surfaces and just middle click it, and it's going to create uh, a nice 2D mesh uh, if I'm not happy with uh, my mesh for some reason, I can pick the edges and I can change the mesh the way I want it uh, with a few click of a button. Now we will use the uh, morph mesh option to kind of align this cross member onto this floor. So I'm going to use the flanges of the newly created cross member. Again, I don't want automatic selection. I go to the morph area and I'm going to pick the entire cross member as my morphing zone. And here I don't want any anchors because I want the entire cross member to morph. As we want to align this um, cross member flanges onto the floor, we will use the floor as a target. So as soon as I select the target, uh, the new morph menu gets popped up. Here, um, I will give uh, some tolerance for welding and say morph. As you can see, the flanges gets um, nicely aligned uh, with the underlying mesh, and I can pick the manipulator and kind of slide cross member onto the floor. As you can see, the flanges and the mesh is nicely getting adapted to the under underlying floor, and I'll just middle click it to confirm my changes. Um, next to the morph mesh, there are, there's an option called as shapes. And I can simply add the shape as a shape variable. Uh, you can see it as a preview, or you can go and say, apply a factor, and it will move back. And you can use this option to set, a, set it up as a design variable for your optimization or DOE run. Hello. 第一课就到这里为止，这一课大家几乎不需要动鼠标，不用打开软件。我们下一课再见。